welcome to this brief introduction to the psychology of persuasion. My name is Jesse Shinto. Today I'd like to talk to you about Robert Cialdini's classic book, Influence. In his book, the author describes six principles of persuasion, which we could just as easily think of as principles of human nature. Let me explain. On any given day, we all make hundreds of decisions, from what to wear in the morning to what program to watch at night. And we don't have time to think carefully about all those decisions, so we rely on mental shortcuts and social cues. These mental shortcuts form the basis of Cialdini's six principles, and they are reciprocation, consistency and commitment, social proof, liking, authority, and scarcity. So during the course of these videos, we'll examine each of these principles in detail. Let's begin with reciprocation. Now I'm sure you've all had the experience of being invited to a friend's house for dinner. And you probably felt some desire to repay the favor by having that friend over to your own house at a later date. That is the heart of reciprocation. Now according to Cialdini, we feel obligated to repay what another person has given us, whether it's a gift or a favor or an invitation. And persuaders use reciprocation to get us to do what they want us to do. Now to give you an example from the business world, uh, we often see free trials or free samples. Maybe you've walked into a restaurant or a grocery store where they offer you a free sample of something to eat. After you take that sample, you feel obligated to purchase the product. Another example, here in the United States, a major accounting firm is offering a free tax analysis. You come in on a particular day, they'll look over your taxes for free, but you'll probably feel obligated then to buy their services. One more example from the nonprofit world. Uh, a while back, I received a letter from an environmental concern, and it had a coin attached to it, and they said they wanted me to donate that amount of money each day. But by giving me that coin up front, they're relying on my sense of obligation to repay the favor and to donate to the organization. So how can we use reciprocation in our presentations? Well, for one thing, we can offer small things like candy or cookies or prizes because these small offerings lead to bigger commitments. The audience member who accepts one of these gifts will feel obligated to listen and perhaps to agree with us. Another thing that we can do in presentations is to highlight the value of the information that we're offering. So we're giving you something really valuable. Don't you feel obligated to buy our services? A final thing that we can do in presentations is to make sure that we ask for the sale because it's at that point, the point that we ask for the sale is when the audience will feel the obligation to return the favor. Now there's something I didn't mention earlier, which is reciprocal concessions. This is where we ask for something big up front, knowing that the audience will say no, and then we ask for something smaller in order to influence them to agree. So to give you an example, you are looking at washing machines and the salesperson says, here's our top of the line washing machine for $1,000. And you're thinking, I can't afford that. No way I'm gonna take that washing machine. Then the salesperson says, well, here's the next one for $800. You might feel obligated because the salesperson has made a concession, has offered you a lower price. You might feel obligated to then buy the $800 washing machine even if you weren't certain at all when you walked in that you were going to buy. So that's how reciprocation is used in persuasion. So just to recap here, reciprocation is the idea that we feel obligated to return favors. There's a saying in English, which is, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. As persuaders, we want to offer something to our audience up front, knowing 
that they're going to return the favor at a later date.